Late September 2022, Joe Joyce knocks out Joseph Parker in 11 rounds in a fight in which Joe Parker had his moments in, but primarily it was Joe Joyce landing shots left, right and centre and taking Joseph Parker out quite brutally in reality. And Joe Parker had been in there with Dylan White. He'd been in there with Anthony Joshua. Joshua never came close to dropping him. Dylan White did drop him, but was on the canvas himself in a very competitive fight. And Joe Joyce just handled him handily. Fast forward, it's not even been two years. It's nearly two years, but it's not quite. Joe Joyce has suffered his third loss in as many fights. Since the Joseph Parker fight, he's had four fights and he's lost three of them. And won one. The only win being against Cash Ali. Is he even... British level is the area level and even in that fight Joe Joyce didn't look amazing it's a far cry from the man who fought Joseph Parker in 2022 what's happened I mean I've just it it really does show to me that sometimes you need Joseph or sorry Joe Joyce when he beat Joseph Parker that then made him interim champion with the WBO he was interim champion he would have been mandated to face Alexander Usyk. He could have actually put a spanner in the works with regards undisputed. I'm not saying he would have beaten Alexander Usyk, but I reckon the WBO, because I think that mandatory, well, it would have probably been called. It would have called it a lot quicker because the WBO mandatory has changed hands a couple of times now over the last two years. It was Joe Joyce, it was Eddie Zhang, it's Joe Parker. So it's kind of, it, it's gone in roundabouts over the last few years but had it just stayed with Joe Joyce they probably would have called it earlier and who knows we could be still waiting for undisputed but who knows Joe Joyce could be fighting Alexander Usyk not saying he'd win but certainly it would have been better to take an L against Usyk and probably would have taken the L on points rather than get your chin dented by Zile Zhang when he beat, Zille, when he beat uh, Joe Joyce or when he beat Joe Parker there was a lot of hype around Joe Joyce. There was people mentioning Tyson Fury versus Joe Joyce, Joshua versus Joyce. And as mandatory challenger, you're not under any obligation to defend that. It's not like you're defending a title or anything like that. You're mandatory challenger. You can fight. Well, it doesn't even have to be a top 15 opponent. You could fight anybody. You could fight them in an 8 rounder, a 10 rounder, a 12 rounder. Didn't matter. So Frank Warren, given the fact that that fight was on pay-per-view, it was in Manchester, Joe Parker. He announced that he would put him in there in the copper box against Zile Zhang. And Zile Zhang was coming off the back of a loss to Phil Perkovic. Many people felt that he won that fight. And for me, when I looked at that fight on paper, I said, God, you know, as good a fight as I think it will be, that is a really, really, really risky fight. Especially when you've really nothing to gain from it. You know, it, I was thinking to myself at the time, late 2022, early 2023, that the best thing you could do with Joe Joyce would be to sit on that mandatory, try and put him in there. You're not going to get pay-per-view fights because he, he needs that name and, and he doesn't, well, you might be able to get that name, but it's a risk. And I said, the best thing you could probably do is fight someone like a Kubrat Pulev, someone like that, where... They're a name, they're a known quantity, but they're not going to pose him any risks. None whatsoever. So he can have those main event fights. You can do them on TNT Sport. And, you know, his name is out there. He's still mentioning a new sec. He's still winning. But his mandatory position isn't in any threat. That's what I thought they should have done. And that that's obviously history will tell you it's what they should have done. They go put him in there with Zile Zhang. <clears throat> a big punch and very dangerous heavyweight. And again, with nothing to gain. And it went horribly wrong. Joe Joyce ends up getting stopped, gets stopped on facial injuries. And then you're kind of like, well, what do you do now? Do you go and do you just take a risk with him? As in, like, cash him out, put him in there against Tyson Fury in a voluntary or something like that and make money? Or do you take the rematch? They took the rematch, which was disastrous for Joe Joyce. I mean, the first fight... They he got stopped on an injury, yes, on facial damage. But he had it in his head that okay, he's not dropped me. My chin held up 
okay. He was rocked a few times. But Zhang was tired and I was going to come into it. They didn't give me a chance to come back into it. So in this rematch, it's all going to be good. I'm going to do everything good in this rematch. It's all going to be good. He gets stopped quicker and gets stopped more devastating in the rematch. In the space of a year, he went from headlining on pay-per-view to being picked up off the canvas in the OVO in Wembley by Zile Zhang. And then Zile Zhang goes on to face Joseph Parker, Deontay Wilder in Saudi Arabia. Joseph Parker, the man who beat Joe Joyce, goes on to fight Deontay Wilder, goes on to then beat Zile Zhang. Joseph Parker is WBO interim champion. He's made plenty of money over there in Saudi Arabia. And he was the guy who lost. Joe Joyce, on the other hand, found himself in the mid-card in Birmingham on St. Patrick's weekend. I think it was when that Magnificent Seven show was on. He's now found himself headlining at the O2 in a 10-rounder against Derek Chisora in a fight in which he's lost. And I didn't see any issue with the scores. I didn't see any issue with the decision. He was dropped by Derek Chisora in that fight. And I said that when he was dropped, he wasn't hurt. Didn't, didn't appear to be badly hurt. He just had this look in his eyes of, is this actually happening? How have I fallen so far? It really does show to me with Joe Joyce. Now look, Joe Joyce, when he turned over, he didn't. He maybe didn't make the smartest moves when he turned pro. He was an Olympic silver medalist, should have been gold. Turned pro with David Hay. Was fighting on Dave, which is a free-to-air TV show or TV network in the UK. It primarily does comedy and it primarily recycles old comedy shows. You'll see like classic Top Gear, Have I Got News For You, stuff like that. So it's it's not really the place you'd be expecting to see heavyweight fighters like David Hay and Joe Joyce. But that's where he turned over, fought Ian Lewis in his pro debut. Was fighting on Dave. Was fighting on David Hay's undercards. But again, the exposure wasn't really there. Because Haymaker, Haymaker Ringstar, I think was what it was originally called. It was, yeah, it, it was small. And it, it never went anywhere. It just didn't grow and Joe Joyce ultimately went to Queensbury. You could say maybe it was a mistake because he was really brought there. Do you remember the early days in Queensbury when Joe Joyce was fighting and Daniel Dubois, they were trying to work towards that fight? It was, as it was known, BT at the time. They were scathing of him. Paul Dempsey would have him ringside, Daniel Dubois would be fighting, and they were scathing of Joe Joyce. You would think he was the away fire. What I mean by away fire, he sort of was. But you would think that he was an unsigned talent who was just there and Daniel Dubois was the Queensbury guy. You wouldn't think that this was an in-house Queensbury fight. And he beat Daniel Dubois. Then Frank Warren started kind of working with him and he gets the pay-per-view level and then they make some bizarre, disastrous, unnecessary matchmaking. And well, here we are. I'm doing a video talking about how Joyce's career has been well and truly effed up. Following on from last night, I think that's the end. In fact, I'm just, I, that's, I'd say stick a fork in him. I'd say stick a fork in both guys, to be honest with you. It was fun, it was a good fight to watch, but yeah, I would be saying stick a fork well and truly in both guys. They're done. For Joe Joyce, we need to wait and see what he does next. He is 38 years old. He's no spring chicken for a heavyweight. He took a lot of shots in that fight against Chisora. A lot of them. A, an awful lot. You could maybe roll a dice and, and try and cash him. I, I would say maybe even slap him in there with Moses the Telma. Because based on what I've seen last night, he's slowed down massively and dramatically. Yeah, he's always going to have punching power, but he's so easy to hit. Moses the Telma would light Joe Joyce up like a Christmas tree. And that could be... The, that could be the fight that they need. They could do that at the Copper Box, at the OVO. They could have him headline. And that could actually stand them in good stead to maybe fight. Who knows? Maybe fight for a title next year. And when I say title, I don't mean British Commonwealth. I mean a version of a title next year. Maybe that's what they'll do with him. Maybe that's the step that Frank Warren will look to go down. Give Joe Joyce one last kind of somewhat payday, one last moment. And work towards getting your new talent, your new precocious talent in Moses and Telma up the rankings. I, I think that's what Joe Joyce in less than two years has become. Major heavyweight contender, top five heavyweight contender to now 
potentially has gatekeeper status. Unbelievable. But it really does show, sometimes with matchmaking, look, if you're trying to get a title shot and it's you versus Ilya Zhang in, in a final eliminator, yeah, you have to take it. But if you're mandatory and you're not having to fight him, you don't need to. You could fight Kubra Pulev, make the same amount of money, fight a Carlos Takam type, a Robert Hellenius type, a Gerald Washington, make the same amount of money. Why the hell don't you just do that? Because it's absolutely wrote your career off. <laughs> you know, credit to him. He wasn't shying away from challenges, but sometimes you need to... This saying box smart. It's not just box smart in the ring, in every aspect. And he definitely didn't do that. So that's my thoughts on Joe Joyce. Uh, let me know. Do you think I'm being too harsh? Do you think that there is still a semblance of hope for Joe Joyce? Let me know in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, as always, if you haven't already. Peace.